Okay, welcome friends, uh, the afternoon session and Jonathan has a couple of questions which I'll try to answer. I feel so close to finding my true purpose, my unique gift of service in this lifetime. What can I do to help me identify this without any doubt? What will help me to get a laser focus to realize this and to know what things do not contribute to this? I feel so close to finding my true purpose, my unique gift of service in this lifetime. What can I do to help me identify this without any doubt? What will help me to get a laser focus to realize this and to know what things do not contribute to this? What contributes to your purpose in life is discovered within yourself. You can't look outside to decide your own purpose of life. You must look inside your own self. When you look inside your own self, the purpose becomes very clear. To discover who you are is a great purpose. Who you really are. I think the human life is the only life in which that has been possible to find out who we really are. And that will be the best purpose of life to discover who we really are, not superficially, not by, in terms of what your behavior is, in terms of what you can do better in life outside. No, what you really are as the source of life itself, as the source of everything, source of all experience. That will give you a type of bliss, a type of awareness which doesn't exist anywhere outside. So that's my recommend recommendation. Look inside for the purpose of life and you get good guidance there. Don't take guidance from outside. What happens if an initiate loses faith in the master and the path? Do they still go to Sach Khan? What happens to their karma? Now what happens if an initiate loses faith in the master and the path? Do they still go to Sach Khan? What happens to their karma? When a perfect living master initiates, he promises to take his disciple to such cult and that promise is never broken. So far as faith is concerned, it creates a little hardship for the disciple when he loses faith because then it becomes more difficult to live in life here. Karma still has to be paid. The karma which is uh, the sinchit karma, the reserve karma, which creates so many lives, that is destroyed at the time of initiation. But the karma we create in this present life has still to be paid off. If you have done good things, we'll get rewarded. If you've done bad things, we'll be punished. If it all cannot be taken care of during this one lifetime here, it can be taken care of in the astral plane and the causal plane. Karma can also be paid off there. Karma can only be created in the human life, but can be paid off in several ways, in dreams, in astral plane, in causal plane, and many disciples of masters pay off the balance of their karma of the current life in the astral plane. So karma will still be paid off, but losing of faith will only create hardship for the disciple, but the master will still do his job and take the disciple to such karma, to true hope. Why do I worry about kids even when they are adults? <laughs> uh, hello, Ishwaji. Why do I worry about kids even when they are adults? Because for parents, kids are never adults. I remember uh, at one time I was working in a hill station and there was a nice public school and the headmaster was a bachelor. Uh, but he loved all the kids in the school. And I happened to be a board member of the uh, administration of the school. So I used to meet the headmaster. And he, is a, he was an Englishman, a British uh, guy who came to India to work in the school. <coughs> One day he said, I want to take you to meet my mother. The headmaster was in his 50s at that time, 55 years old. I said, okay, I'll go see your mother. When I went to see the mother of the headmaster, she said, Oh dear, did you eat the sandwich I gave you? 
Yeah. She treated him like a little kid. So now the master was taking care of so many kids in the school, but at, at home he was a kid. <laughs> so actually for the parents, the children really never grow up. And that is why we treat them like children. It is said that we come here for experience in groups, pods. Do we return to consciousness with the same group? It is said that we come here for experience in groups. Do we return to consciousness with the same group? The, uh, the group is created for the purpose of experience and the group returns for the sake of experience. It's very interesting when we talk of groups. The groups are created <coughs> by, <coughs> for karmic reasons. Families are created, groups of friendships are created. These are created so that the karma can be paid off between those people. The karmic law operates between individuals and human individuals. So that is why the groups that come it, at the time of the creation beyond the, below the mind, at that time, the groups are created. They become families, they become children, and when they return, they go back the same way. Similarly, the gender division takes place also just above the mind region, which is called Parabrahm. When the soul individuates from the totality, at that time, below that, the gender comes. Above that, there is no gender. Soul has no gender at all. Below that, the gender comes, and then we talk of soul mates, that they are one gender, another, and those soul mates come with a certain gender and to be attracted to each other. And they get attracted to each other because of the opposite gender here. And when they go back, they again merge at that point, and they become one soul. So the, the soul is actually uh, split at the mind level and have experience in different places and they rejoin at that time. The groups and souls and all these divisions that we take place is for the sake of operation of the law of karma. And it, uh, it helps. A great master once told uh, his, in a discourse that if a person is initiated, seven Seven generations are benefited by his initiation, one person's initiation. So somebody said, are they the next seven generations or the previous seven generations? He said, what's the difference between the two, the same people coming around? So that is why the groups operate. And they operate together, say they go back together. One more question. I've been initiated by PLM. What happens to the karma, karma I create in this particular life? How do I avoid creating more karma? I have been initiated by a PLM. What happens to the Kriyavan karma I create in this particular life? How do I avoid creating more karma? The Kriyavan karma or the Kariman karma which we create with our intentions and actions in this life uh, can be, uh, you have to pay it off anyway, no matter which PLM has initiated you. If, even if you are initiated, the karma continues to operate in the normal way because if there was no karma, we would have no life. This life in the physical body is possible only because of the karma. So karma is not as bad a thing as we sometimes think. I remember uh, an American disciple of great master, uh, Julian Johnson. We used to discuss this thing about karma. Because in the beginning, he used to go to great master and say, my American friend is in trouble, has bad karma, please help him. When will his karma end? Then great master explained to him that the karma that we have, good and bad, is helping us to become human beings. So it's not a bad thing to have good and bad karma. Supposing all the karma is good, we wouldn't be here. We would be up in some heaven. If all the karma is bad, we would be up in some hell. There is no chance of free will over there, in either place. So to come to be a seeker, you have to have a mixed karma, good and bad. That's how we become human beings. After, uh, I remember Julie Johnson, one of the walks we had and talks on the way to the river, they asked, he said, from now on, I am not going to talk about karma to great master for anybody. 
It's a great platter of good goodies. Even the good and bad karma, both are good. Because they create human life and make us seekers. So that is why karma has to be paid off. How to avoid karma? How to avoid karma? Live, go with the flow. When I came to this country in the 60s, people were talking of go with the flow. I said they create no karma here. They are going with, going with the flow. Going with the flow means whatever the circumstances tell you, just follow them. Don't use your intention and your thinking to decide things. Every time when some circumstances are around us, it gives us an indication what we should do. If you just follow what the circumstances tell us, we don't create any new karma. The events happen anyway because of past karma. The events that take place are all past karma. Only when we use intention to make a decision and only when we have more than one choice, we create a new karma. If we have no choice, we don't create a karma. That's just payoff of the old one. People sometimes say, how can we distinguish between the two? The, whether it's an old karma being paid off or we're creating a new one. The answer is simple. If you are making no choice, you're not creating any new karma. So if you live with circumstances, like people say, go with the flow or live in God's will. Uh, well, on our room, in one of his masnavis, he's uh, taken up this issue that people ask me, what is God's will? Is it everything God's will? He says, God's will is very simple. If he has given you a plow in your hand, he has given his will, dig. If he's given a pen in your hand, he's given his will, right? So whatever the circumstances around you, if you follow, you are living in God's will and creating no karma. It's only when the mind begins to decide, should I do this or that, this or that, then the karma is started. So you can avoid a lot of new karma by living in God's will or living in the circumstances around you. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for the questions. I would like to add, people have been trying to figure out if the past karma that they have carried will be affecting them in the next life. Uh, and they say because sinchit karma is burnt or destroyed at the time of initiation by a perfect living master. What happened to all the past karma? The distinction I want to point out is the past karma which created this life remains intact. The past karma which was not included in this life, that is destroyed. So it's not that we become karma free, because if we were karma free, we would have no bodies here. So that is why only that part of the karma is destroyed in Sinchit Karma at time of initiation, which has not been included to create this life. But what we create in this life, that still operates. Therefore, we have a problem or a destiny from the past karma, which is still intact after the initiation, and we go through it, and we do create new karma, which masters sometimes help us to pay off in an accelerated way, which means a normal pattern of creating karma and pay off would be in the next life. Masters don't want us to have a next life. Therefore, they try to accommodate the new karma we have created in this life to be paid off in this life itself. Sometimes people tell me, after this session, we are having some bad luck. I said, no, most people have good luck, but I'm sorry to hear you have bad luck. But when I hear what their bad luck is, it is merely an acceleration of the karma. They are paying faster. They, therefore, they don't want to come back again in a second life. Do we have to come for a second life? Not necessary. We can finish everything here. If something cannot be finished, then we can finish on the journey back home, which means we can do it on the astral plane. The astral plane offers the same possibility of paying off karma that we have in the physical world. We can't create karma there. Free will does not operate the same way as it operates here, because of knowledge of the future. So that is why uh, we are able to pay off some of our karma there. Some can be paid off even in the causal region. It's a heavy karma, but it's all for one, one lifetime. Uh, I remember 
a story I've shared with you before that my my dad, my, my father himself was a disciple of great master. And one day he heard that after initiation, a person cannot be reborn again as a human being more than three times. That's before lives total you can have if you are initiate. So in the evening we had a meeting with the great master. There my dad raised this issue. He says, why do you stop people from having more than four lives? What if I want a fifth life? So great master laughed and he said, Lake Raj, that was my father's name, Lake Raj, why are you worried about future life? This is your last life. And, and my dad said, but I hear that sometimes master themselves come back again and again. I don't want to be left back in the true home and you come and visit here. So that's why I said, if you are going to come more than four times, why can't I come? That great master explained that when we reach our true home, the individual, individuality of the soul disappears. We become totality. So if one comes again, we can't say the same individual has come. It's from totality, masters are born. Masters come here, they carry the awareness of totality. And therefore, it's not, you can't say pinpoint is one individual coming as the same. All masters come from the same source. The source is the same. And then he said that... Uh, Four lives are not meant for everybody. If you are initiated by a perfect living master and you follow his directions as best as you can, nobody can follow these instructions perfectly. If you can follow those instructions as best as you can, this will be your last life. The rest of it will take care of in the intermediate stages on the way back. But if you do not follow these instructions, you may come back again in a better situation because the next life's karma will be based only on the life of this karma. No previous karma can be picked up for the next life. So it will be better life, better opportunity for meditation and following the instructions of the master. Then you have to come second life. Only if you give up this path and become critical of the master and run away from him, you may have to come third life, not necessarily. And only if you are completely against the master, work against him, you may come fourth life. So it's not normal to come for four lives. Normal is one life. So that is why the great master explained, don't uh, worry about coming again and again. On the other hand, they, somebody had quoted uh, Sait Shiv Dhyang Singh, who was Swamiji from Agra, who set up the Radha Swami faith. Because he had said that the four lives are a total program, program for going back home. So he explained it, I translate for you also. Ek janam gur bhakti, janam dusare naam, janam tisre turiya pad, chokhe menej dham. He says the normal pattern is that the first life, when you seek, you develop love and devotion for your master. In the second life, you come again, and because of the previous work done in devotion, you get initiated. In third life, you can go up to the causal plane and you can definitely go to your true home in the fourth life. So this was a general pattern, he explained, but it does not mean that everybody has to wait for four lives, but can go on the same life also. Some people like to come again, they are most welcome. If you think that you this was a great time you had here, you want to have one more trip, most welcome. But I find most people say, no, we don't want to have another trip because this world, it, although it has equally balanced pain and pleasure, it doesn't look like that. Pain and pleasure are very equ equitably distributed in life. But the pain appears to be more than the pleasure. That is because of the nature of time that we experience. When we have pain, time slows down. And so it looks like it's more pain. When we have pleasure, time speeds up and time passes fast. So therefore, the feeling is that there is more pain in this world and less pleasure. Actually, it's pretty well balanced. Uh, Oscar Wilde, in his essay on suffering, he writes, suffering is one long moment. When a moment, time doesn't pass, you are suffering. Otherwise, time passes very quickly. So it's the nature of time that we experience that generates this difference. 
So the karma that we come here with, we have to go through. It looks like a painful place. That's why most people don't want to come back again. Uh, when you when you go to the higher plane and discover that this creation was not real, it was like a dream. Then one has a different attitude altogether. And sometimes you like to come back just because of that that you discover it was not what you thought it was. Some people do come for that reason. Some souls do come back for that reason. Because like we have a dream at night, the dream looks very real. When we wake up, we discover it was not real. It does not mean we don't sleep next night. We sleep again and have a dream again. Because we know it was not real. The wakeful state was real. When you go to a higher level of awareness, it is more like waking up to a higher level. And then this world looks like you created it like a dream. When we have a dream, in the dream we see many people. Say we in the dream we see hundreds of people in a crowd. And then we find that we can recognize some of them. But the others are strangers. When we wake up, we realize those who we recognized are actually living beings. So therefore, some beings, some people who are actually living participated in the dream also. But not all of them. Most of them were made up. And also those who participated in the dream, they did not know they were participating. The dream was created in your own mind by association with those people. Similarly, we find that when we go to higher levels of awareness, there are souls whom we have been associating with and they appear in this physical world also. And when we go higher, we, dis uh, we discover that we knew them at a higher level, therefore they appeared in the physical level also. It's very similar to remembering some people in a dream and then when we wake up, we realize not all of them were real, some were just for the sake of the dream, some were real. When we go to higher levels of awareness, it looks like you're waking up from a dream. Uh, when you wake up, you don't feel like that you don't have to sleep again because you had a dream or even if it is a nightmare, you still go to sleep again. But this is a continuous process. Some people think that once we go back home, the game ends. The game never ends. The game cannot end because when we go back home, there is no time. The end can only come in time. When there is no time, it's, it, it is immortal. People say soul is immortal. What does immortal mean? Immortal means there is no time. Therefore, it has to be immortal. Mortality comes only when time comes. So that is why there is no time, that it, there is no duration there. So you are there all the time. It's permanent. It's forever. But it's not forever in the sense we are thinking here because forever here we are thinking, oh, so much time will pass. That means forever. There forever is just one moment. It's just timeless moment. Very difficult to describe it, but it can be <coughs> experienced. And there are some meditators have experienced that. It's a very beautiful experience. So I'm very happy again to uh, see all of you here. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, sorry for my hoarse voice today. I hope to be better when you see me next time. Th thank you. And uh, um, I believe there's going to be some snowfall. You have to go back to your homes, have safe, safe trips back home. I wish you all well and great master blessings to all of you.